Hello and welcome back to English Today. This is DVD 11 and the third DVD of your lower intermediate level. And in this DVD, we'll begin with another two episodes of the story That's Life, followed by our special TV programs where we will look at climactic change. And then in our cooking program, we'll talk about planning meals. Then, in the grammar section, we're going to do some more work on the modal verbs can, might, and must, and the concept of probability and possibility. We'll also be studying the grammatical form used to, okay? So, I hope you enjoy yourselves. Alice, is Anne at home? I just met the postman and this package is for her. No, she's not in now. My, what a large package. Please be careful. I think it contains fragile objects. Hey, Peter, do you know if it contains a set of porcelain plates that she won with the Sweet Biscuits bonus points? Well, I think so. At least that's where the package comes from. <laughs> All right, Alice. I have to go now. See you later. Anne will be so happy. She's been waiting for it for a long time. Bye. Hello, Anne. This is Alice. I've got great news for you. Your set of Chinese porcelain has arrived. They're beautiful. No, I opened it. I'm sorry, Anne. I just couldn't resist. <gasps> oh, no, Anne. I'm so sorry. It broke. Okay, okay, I'm not allowed to touch any more plates. You're absolutely right. I'm so sorry. Bye. Jack, be careful. Don't touch anything. This packet contains Anne's set of Chinese porcelain. I hope you didn't break anything. I already broke a plate. And guess who heard me breaking it? Anne. Oh, my. Mm. I didn't notice anything. Well, you should look where you are going. I'm, I'm sorry. What are we going to do? Well, let's get ready for Anne to lose her temper. Who knows? Maybe she'll forgive us. She can't get that angry. They're just plates. Remember, we can't cook. If Anne gets angry, we'll have to learn to cook. That's true. I've got an idea. Let's go get something from the local takeout place. Then we can pretend that we cooked dinner. She might be happy and forget about those plates. That's a great idea. Let's get going. Hello, and welcome back again to your live English language program. And I want to talk to you more about can. Now, how do you express can in the future or in the past? Can in the future. Do we say I will can? What do we say in the past? 
Now this is interesting because it's very strange. We use the verb to be able to. That's what I want to look at now with you on the language screen. To be able to. Isn't that strange? We have learned to use can in the present. We've had examples like I can cook, can you cook, and the negative I can't cook. Now, when we talk about ability in the past, everything changes, and we need to use this verb to be able to. When that goes into the past, we say, I was able to cook yesterday. You see, the verb to be goes into the past. I was able to cook yesterday. Strange, hey? Another example, the question, were you, past tense of the verb to be, were you able to cook? And the negative is, he wasn't able to cook. So, can, in the future, we use to be able to, and in the past, to be able to. So, was, were, able to. The future, let's look at that now. You want to say can tomorrow, so we use to be able to and say, I'll be able to cook tomorrow. I will, I'll. I'll be able to cook tomorrow. The question becomes, will you? Will you be able to cook? And the negative, remember the negative of will? Good. I won't be able to cook tomorrow. So isn't that interesting? When you want to express ability in the future and in the past, you need to use this verb to be able to. Now there's one more thing I want to tell you about and it's about permission. Imagine that you are in a restaurant and you can see no smoking. The person next to you starts smoking. Now it's a rule and a regulation that you can't smoke in a restaurant. So what do you say to that person? In English we say, excuse me, you're not allowed to smoke here. You're not allowed. See that? You're not allowed. Now that pronunciation is difficult. Allowed. Okay? You're not allowed to smoke in here. For example, if you go to a museum, often they say no cameras. So you're not allowed to take photos. Okay, you're not allowed to take photos. Another example, if you go into a library and people are reading, silence. You're not allowed to speak. Okay, so those are interesting things we've looked at to be able to and the use of you're not allowed to. Great. Now we're going to go back to our friends and Anne is very angry about something. She wants to communicate something to her friends. Let's find out what it is and I'll see you later. Bye. What's that you're holding? Hello, everyone. Listen. We need some rules in this house. Living together means obeying some rules. I've written this list of house rules that every person who spends time in this house must follow. No one is allowed to leave this living room until they read and memorize these rules. Bad day, huh? She's right, Jack. Anyway, and dear, what about these house rules? First of all, don't call me Anne, dear. Now listen. Rule number one. 
You must never, and I stress, never open my post. Rule number two. From now on, clean the house at least once a week. Rule number three. We have to take turns washing up. Rule number four. Okay, okay. We understand. But you must be angry. Well, yes, Jack. I'm very, very angry. I was really looking forward to getting that set of Chinese plates. I saved bonus points for a year eating the same stupid biscuits, which, for your information, I can't stand anymore. I just kept eating and buying them in order to get the set of Chinese porcelain. All for nothing. Oh, please forgive us, Anne. Just tell us where to go and we'll buy you a new set. Well, that's not possible. They were handcrafted in Shanghai. And they cost a fortune. Okay, we'll do our best to make it up somehow. Now sit down, Anne. You must be exhausted. Jack and I made dinner for you. You don't have to do anything. We thought of everything. Really? You made dinner for me? Yes, Anne. It was the least we could do. Well, okay. I'll forgive you this time. But I warn both of you that I want more discipline in this house. You can't do what you want all the time. We need some rules. Oh, don't roll your eyes while I'm speaking to you. Okay. Okay, Anne. You're right. Rules are important. But it's also important to laugh a little. <laughs> oh, ha, ha, ha. Hi, and welcome back. This is a box which my mother sent me, and she said there are some useful things for me. So I was just looking. Come and have a look with me. Oh, go on. What's a strain? What's this? What is this? What's this? Well, it can't be a shoe, can it? It's not a shoe. Can't be a shoe because it's made of metal. Um, hmm. It's made of metal? Well, it might be some sort of lamp or something. Like, it looks like an Aladdin's lamp, a special lamp. No, but it can't be that. Ah, look. Here, there's a sort of metal groove. Probably for cigarettes. That's it. It must be... A cigarette holder and a type of ashtray, an oriental ashtray. How unusual. That's very typical of my mother. Useful, though. Now, did you see the language that I used? I said, it can't be a shoe. When I say it can't be, it means it's impossible. It's impossible, it's too small, and it's metal. So it can't be a shoe. So I'm talking about probability and possibility, okay? Then I said, well, it might be a magical lamp. Now, might is when you're not sure. Might is M-I-G-H-T. It might be a lamp. So when you're not sure, you say might. Then I said, no, 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 no. It must be an ashtray. Now, when I say it must be, it's because I'm absolutely sure that the possibility of it being an ashtray is certain, okay? So three possibilities. It can't be, might be, and must be. So let's have a look at the other things in the box. Ashtray. Um, what is this? 
What's this? You see this? Well, it can't be, I mean, it, it looks like a, a negative from a film, doesn't it? it? No, it can't be a negative because there are no images. Um, well, it might be, you know, I just don't know. It, 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 I mean, it might be some sort of special sticker that you put on things, but it hasn't got any glue. I don't know what it is. Just a minute. Look, here, here's something explaining it. A forehead thermometer. Put it on your head and it reads the temperature. What? Let's try that. So I put it on my head like this and said, hold it on your forehead and it tells you your temperature. Let's have a look. 37. Whoo, that's hot. It is. It's a thermometer. Incredible. Now that is very useful because it's small. So interesting. Next thing, what's this? This is, look at this. Now, it's shiny and it's silver, but it, it, it can't be a mirror because I can't see myself. Can't be a mirror. What can it be? Oh, I know. It might be for under glasses. You know what I mean? Um, when you lay the table and you have glasses, sometimes you, you put it under to protect the tablecloth. So, well, <laughs> look what I have here. So this, for example. Yeah, but it's a bit strange, isn't it? I mean, it, no, it, can't, be, it can't be that, really. Not made of metal like this. Um, it must be... Um... <laughs> I don't know again. Wait a minute. Here's the box. A drop stop, a drop stop. It must be something for pouring then. Uh, let's have a look. You put it, uh -huh, let's try. I just so happen to have a bottle here. And it says, put it on the bottle like this. A drop stop, so it stops things from dropping and pour out the liquid and there are no drops. Let's try that. Let's try. Wow. That works. It doesn't drop. So it must be something for stopping drops. You can see. Fantastic. My mother is a genius. She is full of amazing ideas. Thanks, Mum. Let me show you the language that I was using then. We were talking about probability and possibility. And the, the first thing that we can talk about is when you are expressing strong probability, is when you think almost certainly you know what something is. So it must be an ashtray. So when I use must, I am 100% sure of something. It must be an ashtray. Now, if you are sure that it isn't something, that it is totally improbable, 100%, the opposite is it can't be like that. I said it can't be a shoe. It's too small. So it must be. It can't be. And then if you're not sure about something, we use, we use the simple verb might. Look at the spelling, M-I-G-H-T. It might be an incense burner, for example. We can also say it could be. Might, could, both express uncertain probability. All right, so this is very useful when you are making deductions must be it can't be and it well it might be so those are the three verbs that we use okay great so thanks mum and i'll see you again very soon bye
Hi, everybody. What's on TV? Jack, just a minute. It's almost finished. Excuse me. So, what were you watching that was so engrossing? It was an extremely interesting documentary about Picasso's life. There were lots of details about some of his stranger habits. Did you know that Picasso preferred painting women with four eyes? No, I had no idea. And that he had lots of different types of dogs. He used to give only dogs to his friends. Strange, isn't it? And that he liked eating Italian cake at Christmas. <laughs> well, I also go crazy for Italian cake at Christmas, and my name isn't Picasso. By the way, where is our resident artist, Alice? She left early this morning. She said that she had something important to do. She wouldn't tell me what. But she did say it was none of my business. You know how she is. That's strange. She usually leaves late. Well, as a matter of fact, she was very serious this morning. She told me she had a headache, but I didn't believe her. Oh, look. But it's getting late. I'm starting to get worried. <laughs> Don't play mom, Anne. Alice is a big girl now. I know, I know. But it's just that but she didn't tell me she would be late. In fact, she asked me if I would be late today. Just a moment. A few days ago, Alice told me that she wanted to enter a painting contest. She said she thought it was her big chance. Maybe that's where she is today. Well, you're probably right. But it, it's almost midnight. I don't think contests last that long. <laughs> Why not? We all know that artists are a little crazy. Picasso was a perfect example. <laughs> That's true. You know something about being crazy, Jack, don't you? <laughs> again. Did you hear them talking about Picasso? Some interesting things about him. They said he used to give only dogs to his friends. He used to give only dogs and he used to eat Italian cake at Christmas. Now this verb used to, well it's written U-S-E D, but the pronunciation is used, and we'll see that on the screen later. And we use it to talk about habits that people have had in the past and now don't have any more. And to illustrate this, I have some here, some examples of habits that I have had in the past. For example, this. This is a cigarette. Well... I used to smoke. Now that means that I did smoke in the past, but I don't smoke anymore. I stopped the habit. I used to smoke, okay? Look at this tennis racket, ha ha. I used to play tennis. I was quite good, actually. I used to play tennis, but then I stopped. I didn't have enough time, too much work. You know how it is. <laughs> this, now look at this, look at this. This is fur. I used to wear this in England. It's a fur. You know, F-U-R, this. I used to wear it in England, but then I stopped because now in England people spit, spit at you if you wear fur. So, 
That is a habit I have definitely stopped. Now these, these are vitamins. Now, I didn't used to take vitamins in the past. I didn't used to, but then my mother, you know, my mother's fantastic. She explained how useful they can be, so now I do, but in the past I didn't used to. And this opera, yeah, another thing, opera. I didn't used to listen to opera, but now I just love it. So I listen to it a lot. Okay, so there were some examples for you of used to. Let's go and look at the different forms on the board now. So when we speak about habits that we had in the past and we don't have now, we use used to. Look at the spelling, S, it's, it's U-S-E-D and then T-O. But the pronunciation is not used, it's used. Unusual. Used. Okay. So the example is I used to smoke. And that's for all the subject forms. I used to, you used to, he used to, she used to, we used to, they used to. Okay. So I used to smoke. I used to play Tennis, I used to wear fur, okay? Pronunciation, used. Now, in the negative, we use the auxiliary did. So, I didn't use. Notice we take off the D because it's the infinitive. I didn't use to take vitamins. And I didn't use to listen to the opera. And the question form is easy. It's did you use to do a lot of sports? Did you use to stay in bed until midday? I remember that. So if you think about your lives and about habits that you had in the past and you don't have now, when you talk about those to people, that's what you use. I used to smoke, but I don't anymore. I used to play tennis but now I'm too busy. All right, so very important for describing past habits, used to. Great, that's the lesson for now, and I'll see you again very soon. Bye. Good morning, Alice. Where were you last night? We were getting worried. Good morning. It's a very... It's a very... I thought it would be the... Why? What happened? Well, I took part in a young artist competition. Good morning, Alice. Where were you last night? We were getting worried. Good morning. I prefer not to talk about it. Why? What happened? Well, I took part in a young artist competition. I thought it would be the perfect occasion for me to show my talent. So? How did it go? You made a great impression, didn't you? Well, no. It went badly. They said that I wasn't cut out to be an artist. But the jury was made up of incompetence. Maybe no one appreciates my talent. Oh, come on, Alice. Don't take it so badly. You know you are a genius, right? That's all that matters. Yes, just like Van Gogh. Who, by the way, only became famous after he had died. Maybe that's my destiny. <laughs> Maybe you're exaggerating just a little bit. I mean, Van Gogh. But you don't really think you're in the same league, do you? And why not? No one appreciates my talent either. Anyway, I want your opinions. 
Wait just a moment while I get something. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Here you go. This is the painting I took along yesterday. What do you think? Isn't it beautiful? It's, <clears throat> it's interesting. Um, it's a very, uh, a very unique painting. Yes, unique is the right word. Uh, Alice, you know I don't really understand art, don't you? What does it represent? That's the same question they asked me yesterday. <laughs> I can't believe that. It's so clear. It's a painting of a man and a woman walking hand in hand. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. um, well, the truth is, uh, it's a bit difficult to see. I mean, at first glance, it looks like a whole lot of mixed up colors. Oh, come on, Jack. You just don't understand abstract art, do you? Well, now I understand that neither of you has any appreciation of fine art. <laughs> oh, artists. Never tell an artist what you really think. <laughs> <laughs>
isn't he? Great, you're getting better all the time. They'll be late. They'll be late. Won't they? They'll be late, won't they? And the last one, we can't buy it. Mm. We can't buy it. Can we? Okay. So it's negative and positive. We can't buy it. Can. Well done. You know, these are difficult. Only if you know your auxiliary verbs can you do these question tags. So congratulations. We're making progress. Great. So I'll see you in the next lesson very soon. Take care and enjoy studying. Bye. Good morning. Welcome to this week's edition of Climate Change. In the studio with me is our weather expert, Susan Thurley. Good morning, Eric. Well, Susan, there's a lot of talk these days about climate change. Could you explain exactly what is happening? Of course. You know, the first thing to stress is that the Earth's climate is always changing. In the past, this happened due to natural causes. Mm. I mean, the atmosphere and the Earth's climate changed naturally. Now things are different. Scientists believe that climate change today is a result of man's activities, our activities. Hmm. And why are scientists so worried about this climate change? Well, before I answer that question, I'd like to talk a little about what we call the greenhouse effect. Certainly. Scientists often talk about the greenhouse effect. What is this exactly? The greenhouse effect is very important for the world's weather. Greenhouse gases help to capture the energy we receive from the sun. They keep the earth warm. Without these gases, the world would be a colder place, and our lives would be very different. Well, if the greenhouse effect is so useful for the earth, why do scientists talk about it nowadays as if it's something dangerous? It's the extra greenhouse gases that are dangerous. Our way of life cars, factories, central heating, is producing too much of these greenhouse gases. These gases are trapping more and more of the sun's energy, and the world's becoming warmer. Is carbon dioxide one of these gases? Yes, carbon dioxide, CO2, is one of the main greenhouse gases. Carbon dioxide is produced when we burn coal and natural gas. The problem is that over the years, the concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere has increased enormously. So, to stop global warming, we need to use less coal and natural gases. Exactly. Hmm. But not only that, we also need to plant more trees and we must stop destroying our forests because they take carbon dioxide out of the air. Is there anything else we can do? Well. Governments around the world need to encourage the use of renewable energy sources. Solar panels can use the sun's energy. Wind turbines can generate electricity from the wind. And hydroelectric power plants can use water to generate electricity. Hmm. Renewable energy is becoming popular today, isn't it? Yes, it is. But there's still a long way to go. Okay, Susan. One last question. What are the consequences of climate change? Well, higher average temperatures around the world. You know, even a small change in temperature, even a one degree increase, can cause the sea level to rise as the polar ice caps melt. In fact, this is already happening. Other consequences. More rainfall in some parts of the world and less in others. Mm more extreme weather conditions, stronger hurricanes and typhoons. So this is definitely a serious issue. We mustn't underestimate the importance of climate change and we need to use more renewable energy. Well, thanks to Susan for your clear explanation of the problems. Thank you. Goodbye. And goodbye. And see you again next week for another edition of Climate Change.
Okay, now let's have a look at all the terms and expressions we use to talk about the weather and climate change. Firstly, climate change is the term we use for the changes to the world's weather. For example, higher temperatures and more rainfall. Rainfall is how much rain there is, the volume of rain that falls. And I finally understand what the greenhouse effect is. Well, a greenhouse is a transparent house, usually made of glass, where we grow plants. It gets very hot in a greenhouse. In fact, the greenhouse effect is the gases in the atmosphere that trap the sun's energy, causing an increase in temperature of the world. This is what we call global warming, the world becoming hotter. The atmosphere is words for the gases that cover the world. The main gases are nitrogen, oxygen, and carbon dioxide. Now, carbon dioxide is one of the main greenhouse gases. These are the gases responsible for the greenhouse effect. The carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is increasing due to man's activities, so we have to do something to reduce it. We use the expression due to, to say, as a result of. Susan said we should use more renewable energy sources. Renewable energy is energy from the sun, the wind, and water. For example, solar panels generate electricity from the sun, and wind turbines generate electricity from the wind. The verb to generate means to make. Well, Renewable energy is becoming popular today, which is good, but there's still a long way to go. This expression, there's a long way to go, means that there is still a lot we have to do before we reach our objective, which is to reduce global warming. We've run out of time, so that's all for now. See you soon. Welcome to Cooking Today. All homemakers will be thrilled to know that we're back with Lisa French. Thank you for inviting us into your lovely home once again, Lisa. I'm glad to have you. Now, Lisa, Leslie Forbes from Newcastle on Tyne is desperate. Her family's always complaining about her cooking. They say it's really mm, yucky. And they sneak out to get junk food. How can she make her meals more appetizing? Well, actually, it's just a matter of good meal planning. That sounds rather serious. Yes, it is. But it can also be a fun challenge. This means preparing food that's healthy as well as appealing and involves the senses such as smell, taste and sight. Is that why they say your eyes are bigger than your stomach? Not exactly. Now, getting serious, when you say healthy, you're referring to nutrition, aren't you? Yes, of course. Nutrition is the key to good health. As a matter of fact, nutritionists agree that a varied diet is fundamental for physical and mental well-being. Well, what are the correct guidelines to good nutrition? As you can see, I have an example of a food pyramid here. These six main food groups contain the nutrients essential to a well-balanced diet. Why a pyramid? Because it enables us to understand the correct number of servings per day. Can you give an example? Certainly. You see, the largest group includes bread, cereal, rice and pasta. Then, going up the pyramid, you find fruits and vegetables, then meats and dairy products. What's at the top? You mean here? These are fats, oils and sweets, which, although essential to the diet, must be eaten in moderate quantities. Now, going back to Leslie's request, how can she make tasty meals for her family? If she hasn't much time for shopping, she can make a weekly plan. Besides a correct diet, she must consider the likes and dislikes of her family. You're telling me. In my family, my son hated beans and my daughter was allergic to milk. 
that's a common problem. The thing is to compensate with food belonging to the same group or supplements. Really? That's good to know. A little secret. If you truly enjoy preparing meals, then your family will probably enjoy eating them. How can I get my family to enjoy my cooking? Just be creative. Think like an artist. Play with the colours, shapes and texture of food. Oh my gosh! How time flies! We've got to wind this up. Lisa, thank you for inviting us into your home again. It's been a pleasure being here. Thank you for coming. And now, let's pay attention to some expressions used in the dialogue. We've talked about meals, breakfast in the morning, lunch at noon, dinner, or in the U.S., supper at night. In the U.S., a dinner is the main meal of the day, even at lunchtime. Notice that in the U.K., tea is sometimes used instead of dinner. When we refer to specific times during the day, we can say lunchtime, tea time. Lisa showed a food pyramid. It contains food groups, such as cereals, meats, dairy products, milk, cheese, yogurt, fats and oils, and vegetables. All these foods contain nutrients. Then some positive adjectives used to define food are appetizing and healthy, while yucky is something rather disgusting. Moreover, the expression junk food refers to food which is not considered healthy at all. We say diet to indicate what we eat. It also means a series of rules to be followed to improve one's health. If we want to lose weight, we say, I'm on a diet. A diet is correct when it's varied or well-balanced. If you're allergic to a type of food, eating that food can make you ill or cause skin problems. Lisa talked about texture food. For example, food can be defined soft, crispy, crusty, or shape. Food can be cut into slices, cubes, and rings. During the interview, I quoted a common way of expressing that somebody has put more food on their plates than they're actually able to eat. Your eyes are bigger than your stomach. All right, that's all this week. Bye-bye.